Hey guys, welcome to another YouTube uh, home lab series video. Hopefully you've been enjoying the series so far. Um, lots of good videos. And if you haven't seen my latest video, I actually did a unboxing video of my Unify Flex Mini Switch and Ethernet cable. So you should go check that video out also. I actually don't know how to do the link stuff yet, so I'm not gonna do pointy point and link things. But one of these days, I will figure out how to actually link videos in another video that doesn't isn't at the end of the video so one of these days i'll i'll, I'll learn it um but today we're going to actually be creating a true nas server so if you've ever messed with um nas storage which was network attached storage um it's it's kind of a nice way to kind of um be able to store um files on on a network share like an smb share you've probably if you've never heard of it it's essentially windows network sharing um system that you can just pretty much just click on the share copy paste it just goes and anyone can access it that has access to it essentially so what we're actually going to be doing is setting up true nas server setting up an smb share and just showing you that you can just kind of set up in your home network and just have a network share in your home network to share files across multiple computers um and yeah so this video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So if you enjoy the content, want to send me some free swag, or you want to sponsor me for something, you can send me an email in the description below. So, all right, let's get started, guys. Okay, so first thing, first thing, we need to download TrueNAS um, from the website. I've already done this, but I'm going to show you where you can go download it. So you can Google it, click on the link, TrueNAS. TrueNAS is a very nice open source free BSD um, system that you essentially can just easily get in, download, and just install. Um, it's pretty user friendly. Um, there's also other things like Unrated and a few other things that you could use, but in this case, we're going to just do a TrueNAS one. So you would just click download, download stable release, or download. Um, so I'm not actually going to download this because I've already downloaded it and uploaded it to my vCenter. So we're going to create a new virtual machine from this. And we're going to just name it Dragon TrueNAS. Yeah, just all lowercase TrueNAS. Yeah, TrueNAS. You can name it obviously whatever you want. Uh, we will put it in this data store. EXXI. Yeah, so in this case, um, because it's FreeBSD, you have to use other, and then there should be like a FreeBSD pre whatever version you want the 64 bit. Um, depends on your version of vCenter. This could be like pre 12 or whatnot. In this case, my my I need to upgrade my version of vCenter. Honestly, I I haven't had time to do that. So maybe we'll make a video on how to up, up, upgrade it actually. But in this case, we're gonna just go with the FreeBSD essentially 64 bit version. So we upgrade that. Um, for CPU and memory, this is this is truly up to you on how you want to use your TrueNAS. TrueNAS has a lot of other capabilities like spinning up VMs, Docker, and other things within it. So you can definitely spec it up higher. Um, but in this case, we're just going to use it as a tr as as a storage system. But um, because for time's sake, I'm going to just give it like eight CPUs and sixteen gigs of RAM, just so that it just kind of flies by the install quicker. Okay. So now here's the important part. So in most cases, you probably aren't virtualizing your true NAS and uh, you're using a actual physical hardware, whether it's a, a desktop computer with multiple hard drives or, or you actually have a server that you're gonna dedicate just to be NAS storage. Um, so in this case, <clears throat> we're gonna assume that you have like three hard drives um, and, and I'm gonna just do 40 gig hard drives, but really it's up you, you probably have like two terabyte hard drives or whatnot, but we're gonna just use three more hard drives just just for show sake here. But you essentially will just, this is essentially just plugging in like more hard drives. It's, it's nothing like magic or anything. It's just, hey, I got another hard drive, let's plug it in. Um, but this is just all virtual instead of physical hard drives. So the thing you want to know is um, you will need a boot hard drive. Um, and in this case, I, it doesn't need to be very big. I'm just gonna leave it as eight gigs. But if you're doing this on a physical server, you probably want to get like 
a you know ssd or maybe an m2 you know it doesn't have to be a very big one it could be like 120 gigs or whatnot to be be a boot drive so that it boots quickly and then the rest of your drives whether you want to make like you know one terabyte hard drives two terabytes maybe even do like 16 terabyte hard drives in in your rig um you essentially have those as your actual storage um and use it in in your storage array so in this case we're just gonna just do 40 just to show, um, but obviously I assume you probably guys are gonna get like, you know, two terabyte drives or, or bigger, depending on how much storage you actually need. Okay, and then we're gonna go to the data store. We're gonna grab the ISO here. So we're gonna go to our ISOs directory that we created. TrueNAS, next. And make sure you hit connect, because if you don't hit connect, it won't actually connect the CD. All right, so now we're gonna finish that. It's gonna complete, and we're gonna power this on. So, so now you can see you got the you got the boot here or we'll enter to boot it. You see a lot of things that honestly you probably don't ever need to care about or look at. Um, and then we're gonna go with just the install. So easy number one. So this is this is where you choose where you want the OS to live. So this is why I said you want the, your boot drive and then your actual other drives. You don't want to install the operating system on one of your other drives because that's just a waste of space. So you can see that that's the boot drive. So we're gonna hit uh, space and then uh, to to select it and then tab to get to the okay so it will say we're gonna erase everything on that drive make sure you install it do you want to proceed all right and then you'll confirm with adjust the password for the root user <clears throat> now it, it depends on your system here because depending on like where you're installing it um you either use bios or uefi um if you're using it on a later um, system where it, the motherboard is like 100% UEFI and you have to boot via UEFI, you probably want to use UEFI. Um, but if you're running an older system, like you have older hardware, BIOS is usually the way to go. So in this case, I know that we're going to use BIOS because I'm, I'm not running UEFI on, on my uh, VMware stuff right now. So we're going to boot via BIOS, but you'll have to kind of know. And if you don't know, you can try one. If it works, great. If it doesn't, do the other. <laughs> Um, it's not it actually doesn't take that long to install Okay, so we're gonna let that install um, And we'll go back to our actually DNS project here real quick um, because we want to add another DNS record in here and uh, Name it TrueNAS so TrueNAS so that we can resolve it in a oh, I hate the tab completely. <laughs> I did it twice guys, okay escape and then we all put it and we'll just put our uh, 138 here don't forget to update the serial number and we will commit this I do not commit and that will run okay so that is still installing installing base os 103 um the other thing we can do while we wait for this to uh install is actually create the the ca the not ca so the the certificate um and the key for this so that we can actually ac access this via https so um let's log in to our step oh ca server it's running step but it's a ca server all right uh, oh, make direct, um, and then we're gonna name it TrueNAS. Okay, so step CA certificate. Oh, okay, here we go. All right, so see, it was super quick, and, and it's a very, very quick install. So that's that finishes installing. So now we can reboot the system. You don't have to do anything with the CD because actually it will unmount it, so it won't actually go back to that. TrueNAS.dragon.local is the domain. TrueNAS, okay, so now we want to boot TrueNAS. It will actually auto boot, you don't actually have to enter, but if you want to speed it up, you can hit enter. <laughs> TrueNAS.dragon.local.cert and TrueNAS.dragon.local.key. All right, so now we need to go get the key here. So we need to go to our Vault Warden. Grab the key, paste that. All right, so now we got now we got both key the set and the key in here. All right, so 
it's gonna boot up, gonna gonna do some stuff. You're gonna you're gonna see a lot of things. And you can go, is this is this legit? Yes, yes, it is legit. <laughs> just it's just weird because you don't usually see you know dot 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 stars dot or plus sides dot, but it's it's actually doing things. You don't have to be alarmed. <laughs> But I can, I have definitely gotten to points where it, it was like, oh, is it actually doing something that I'm expecting? Okay, so now that this has been set up uh, or, or booted, we're going to actually set the IP. So in this case, it just picked up DHCP on my network, so it just auto assigned 177, but we really want it on, what, what did I say, One, 138, 138. So what we're going to do is configure... Uh, network interfaces so one select the interface <sighs> we don't want to remove the, the current network settings we do not want to configure the HTTP but we do want to comp configure IPv4 so we'll the interface name is the EM EM0 you can see it on there um, so the IP address is 138 right it was 138 And then the net mass is just 24. We don't want to configure IPv6 because we don't need IPv6, so we won't even configure it. Okay, so now you can see how you can hit this address and it will go. Um, so by default, um, we can actually do this. The cert on here is actually just a custom cert that I, uh, IX systems just create so that you can have use HTTPS and then just know that it's not a it's, it's not a trusted cert but because this is on your home network this is how a lot of people set it up that it it's better to be https and not a trusted cert that you just trust like what i just did right there than have it on http and then someone could actually grab if they're sniffing your traffic actually grab plain text passwords <laughs> okay so the username is root and then the password was the password that you added so now you can log in so true NAS looks pretty great actually. Like the dashboard tells you, hey, here's the interfaces, here's your CPU information, here's your RAM information. So you can see how we actually had, um, in this case, it actually tells me eight threads. Oh yeah, yeah, because I put eight CPUs. And then 16 gigs of RAM, more or less. So the first thing we're gonna do here is actually go to uh, system and certificates. Um, so we need to add our, our certificate. So we're gonna just name it dragon. Um, and we'll import certificate, and then we'll copy certificate and copy the key. So cat trunas cert. So copy this. That's the cert, and then get the key. And get the key. All right, and then we submit. So now we have. Uh, uploaded our cert in here. Um, now we need to go to um, somewhere else to actually select the cert. Um, and I don't actually remember where it is off the top of my head now. So give me one second while I click through a lot of this and still probably not even know what, what where I'm clicking. It took me a little bit, but in system general, the very top line on what the SSL cert is, you can select which SSL cert. So it's, so it's, so it's right there. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna select the dragon set that we created. We'll click save, and we'll confirm that the web service restarts. Um, so because the web service has to restart, we're just gonna reload the page. And now you can see it is signed with our cert, which is great. So. Next thing, we're going to actually have to create a pool. A pool is essentially just a like data store and in regards to, hey, I have all these hard drives. I want to use all these hard drives and create it as a volume. So we're going to create a new pool. I'm going to name it storage. Um, you probably won't run into this issue when you're using real hard, real, um, hard drives, but because I'm using virtual hard drives, it won't be able to pick up the serial number. So in this case, we're gonna to have to show, and then we're gonna grab these over here. We're gonna move them over. It'll create the, the data thing. Um, the other thing to note here is 
um, there is options on how you can use these hard drives. So depending on how many hard drives you, you use, you can actually set it in different RAID, Striped, or Mirror. Um, in this case, we're going to go just with RAID Z. Um, but uh, if you guys do want to know more about how RAID works, what type of RAID you should pick, let me know and I can create a video on that. But in this case, we're just going to do RAID Z so that we can just create that volume. So we'll create the pool. It doesn't take that long. Um, it might take a little bit depending on if you already have data on the hard drives and you're reusing a hard drive, but in this case, it shouldn't take um, that long. So, all right. So now that we have the pool, we can now create the SMB share, the window share, and utilize that pool. So we'll go over here, we'll click it, click storage, leave everything else as default, and make sure it's enabled. It'll prompt you to enable the service so that people can actually use it. And now you've essentially set up SMB. So you should be able to open a web GUI and actually type in slash slash, which is the forward slash backslash. I, I don't actually know what, which slash is. It, it's a slash above the enter, guys. <laughs> um, Dragon.local. And then we named it storage one, so we can actually type in storage one here like this. It will prompt for a login, so you can still use the, the login that you logged into it. Um, you can also create different users. So like if you're trying to do this SMB share for like multiple users in your house and you want them to have separate logins, you can also do that too. And we'll log in. Oh, actually it might not let me log in as the root user. I forgot that. Yeah, it won't actually let me log in as the root user. Okay, wait. I need to actually create a user account here real quick. Users. Uh, we'll name it Dragon, Dragon. Confirm password. Primary group. Uh, we can we can actually set the home directory in, in here too, but uh, read write. Oh, actually, you you might need directory and permissions to actually have their them be in there. Um, so now we'll submit that. Okay, so now we should actually with the new user created. True nas dragon local slash storage. Yeah. So so now I can actually get to it. I actually have my home directory also dragon, so I can put things in this home directory, and I have actually access to. Uh, read and write it. Um, the other neat thing that you can do here is um, you can actually map it as a network drive. So you can actually map it with a, one of the letters. In this case, we'll just do sh um, Z. So true NAS. So this is this is essentially whenever you log in or have to like uh, reboot your computer, this network drive will always show back up, which is useful because you don't want to go through the whole or is it storage storage one? A storage one, I think. You don't want to go through the whole situation to have to reconnect and log in every single time because what I did works well, but it doesn't work well if you like utilize that drive all the time. So we all reconnect the sign in and we also connect using different credentials because we're not using Active Directory to connect. Um, and we all remember my credentials here. And so now the drive is mapped. So when you go to this PC, you can see that this is a mapped drive right here now. So that is, concludes this video. Uh, we created a true NAS, uh, created the, the pool and set up SMB so that you can actually uh, create and uh, update files or move, move files to the SMB storage. So if you like this video, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Bye.